So you just twist them in there and they charge it up. Oh, we're also standing about 100 feet away around two corners, right, Jay? Yes. Very safe. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting this fire line, we uh, open this mine. Yeah. After more than a year of restoration work, after being closed for more than 40 years, the day is finally here. That day is the grand reopening of the Brooks Coal Mine in Scranton, located right here at Nayog Park. Now, it opens officially to the public tomorrow, August 12th, but today is media day, and I was invited out to get an early preview. And I know that the underground miners are really excited to unveil this project to the public. And I can't wait to see the final product because as you know, I did document part of the restoration work over the last year. If you haven't seen those videos, they will be linked down below in the description. But if you're ready, you're invited to come along with me for this special occasion. So right now I'm here with one of the underground miners known as Adam Z. Adam, glad for having you on this segment here. Thanks for having me, JP. I'd like to ask you, what got you involved with the underground miners group? Uh, I got involved back in 2004, I think. And I came, I, I heard about the underground miners. I looked at the website and I knew where there was some neat spots in the area. So I sent Chris an email, we met up and that was the end of it. I've been. Head, head deep into it ever since then. And how many projects do you think you've been like involved with with underground miners? I've been involved with every project. Everyone? Uh, yeah, uh, restoring the mine motors, restoring the uh, mine cars. Uh, I've had a hand in every one of them pretty much. And I have seen course. from my last visit here that you do have some experience with laying down spikes in the track. Yes, yes. Uh, Chris and I and Banks and the crew, uh, we laid uh, 800 uh, feet of track in his dad's yard back when we were a lot younger. <laughs> and we spiked a lot of rail back in the day. Well, it looks like you still got the knack for it, so. Yeah, a little rusty, but. Yeah, it, it's like it, riding it, a bike. It, yeah, riding a bike, you don't forget. <laughs> so regarding the Brooks Mine, I mean, obviously there's been over a year and a half worth of restoration. What do you think is gonna be, not only your personal thoughts on, it, on a reopening, but just the general buzz of like the team of the underground miners, like what's the feelings and thoughts right now that the day's finally here? We we are ecstatic. We cannot believe th this, you know, 17 months we've been working on this mine, but it hasn't been 17 months. It's been 20 years in the making. We, uh, we talked, this went across our desks. I say desks loosely. Yeah. Uh, back, you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago, we talked about possibly doing this, and then it just went off the radar. We started working with the other tour mines, everything like that. And uh, then when Chris got back to me in, what was it, January, two years ago or whatever, he uh, they mentioned about this, and I was, I was all for it. And it's just, it was a long time, we first, when I first looked at it, I was like, this is gonna be a lot of work, but here we are, was yeah. 17 months later. And, grand opening it's 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 exciting it really is and in your in your opinion do you think it's probably better than it's ever been with the work uh, you guys have done probably it's probably a lot safer than yeah. it's ever been because we did a lot of stuff uh, that we did a lot more timber work than what was in there previously everything like that our electrical is all up to code uh, we it's, actually have a second opening now. And it's that, never had ventilation before, right? No, never had ventilation. So yes, I, I say safety-wise, like that, I think we are. So golden. it's up to date and meeting the standards. Yes, awesome. yes, we've had mine inspectors come through, and they said we did a fantastic job. All right, Adam. I know you have a busy day ahead of you here with the media and everything uh, taking place for the mine. So thank you for your time, and looking forward to the public's response on this mine. Jay, I just want to say I want to thank you very much for doing uh, your videos on and showing the progress from when we first started until the grand opening. It's it's fantastic that oh, you're documenting all this. My pleasure. I'm glad I had the opportunity to do so. Yes, thank you very much. So the day has arrived. <laughs> Can't believe it, it's been a year and a half, almost almost to the date of uh, starting this project. And um, it's, it's here, we're open to the public tomorrow. So let's take a quick walk inside and I'll show you what we've done since, uh, since last time we were here. The road comes all the way outside now. <laughs> so there's there's future plans for this, that's gonna for phase two. So yeah. we'll, we'll save that for your, your next visit, I guess. <laughs> 
Did we have the temporary lights in last time we were here? Yeah. No, did we? Okay. Haven't strung up. So we got these are the permanent lights now. The track and the track bed's all done. We're walking through. Drainage control on the on the sides over here. So what we're seeing right now, though, is what the public's going to see going forth tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly what you'll see when you walk in here tomorrow. Got our displays. This is basically a timeline of uh, the whole project as we go through. I hear the hum of the ventilation. Yes, we have we have fresh air coming in, fan sucking it through. Oh, you got the veins labeled. Yeah, nice. so we got the Dunmore number two and number three vein. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if you, uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of your viewers and people in the area have gone down the Lock One of Mine tour. Uh, the 190 slope over there in Taylor. So when you go when you go down the slope, well before I get that, so we're basically on the outcrop here at the on the top of the hill where the veins come to the surface. Mm -hmm. Usually these two veins are about 50 feet apart, but there's a fault here in the park and all the veins kind of come together. And uh, the two and the three are really close right here, separated with about four feet of rock. But if you, this vein goes all the way down under the valley, about I believe right around here about 800 feet, and it comes all the way back up on the other side. So it makes like a big bowl. And this same vein of coal is the one you see at the Lackawanna Mine Tour when you go down the slope through the rock tunnel and where the there's a shaker conveyor and the, the escape capsule is. Mm -hmm. That vein is the same vein as this one here. So that really senses or shows the scope of the vein, how large it is, yeah. how far it goes. Yeah, you can stand outside of the portal, look all the way across the valley, and you can see where it would pop out on the other side. And there's coal all underneath you. Oh, coal all the way down, about <laughs> eight, eight levels deep. Wow. This is the, the number three vein is more or less the bottom vein in the valley so this where the floor is here is is the bottom vein it just goes down and comes back up again a few places there's a they call it the number number four or the china vein mm. so i guess they were digging for china when they found that one <laughs> but uh that's that's only sporad it's sporadic it's only in a few places throughout the valley okay and just for the mention for the lighting, I remember you mentioned last time you got like the Edison style bulbs. Is that yeah, correct? these are LED 40 watt Edison style bulbs, so they have a nice, uh, a nice yellow glow to them, kind of a little more period correct, like they would have been, and they're protected by a steel cage around them, nice. a little more industrial. So over here we have a, a simulated shot wired up. So you'd have a, you know, if you're drilling this coal vein to fire it, you'd have a, you know, your breaker hole in the center and then your four on the perimeter of it. And that's wired to a, to a firing battery. So in the old days, we would have used a plunger. We have one up here, we can show you that in a sec. But, uh, kind of how they do in Lackawanna too, right? Yeah, just, so, yeah, similar exact same thing. Uh, today we use a, today we use a firing battery. So you take your two wires on the battery and you hook them up to the, to your terminals here. They should have been shunted together. Whoever did the last demonstration didn't have them shunted. <laughs> so you just twist them in there and they charge it up. Oh, we're also standing about 100 feet away around two corners, right, Jay? Yes, very safe. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so then that would set the shot off. And that's a, the actual device that would be used? It's what we still use today. Is yeah, it? Okay. yeah we actually, I just grabbed, I got one for, for doing demonstrations in here. Nice. So that was firing the dynamite, but we got a little bit ahead, our, ahead of ourselves here because we need to drill the holes first, right? You can't just stick it against the side and expect the coal to fall out. So a couple of our demonstrations. I brought one of my, uh, one of my drills. This is a drill from the 1800s. It's called the breast auger. And we started a little hole here. So they call it a breast auger because you'll stick it in the, against your coal vein, and then you stick your chest against this thing, and then you we'll get it against the hole. And then you gotta drill your holes. Jeez. That takes about 20 minutes to put a hole in. We've, uh, we've drilled a couple. <laughs> now would that be done by one individual, or would you kind of you could, team up with someone? You could have a, 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 your laborer you know, push against it, and you could drill, or you could do both ways, or do it yourself either yeah. way. Uh, and then you pick up your dynamite, so you have a you have a blasting cap. And it's because I know people are going to be seeing this, so it's a it's a dummy. It's got a hole, it's drilled. It's not a real blasting cap. But you'll take your blasting cap and you'll stick that into your powder, tie your half inch around it, and then stick your dynamite in the hole. And then you get your wooden tamping stick. You put your dynamite in there with the wires coming out. Take the tamping stick, tamp it in there nice and tight. 
and then we'd go down and fire it. So that's a uh, late 1800s, early 1900s drill. How much does that thing weigh about the drill? It's not that heavy, maybe 20 some pounds, okay. I guess. Yeah. But then later on, they came out with uh, basically a drilling machine. And this is a steel pin. You drill a small hole with a little hand drill in the rib, tap the pin in, and then it's got a thread box on here with a threaded drill. So as you turn the drill into your coal, it threads itself through the thread box and forces itself into the hole. Oh, okay. So it takes the pressure out of it. So you don't have to push on it. Still manual labor. And what's, so the, now, the, what's the date on that approximately? That's the early 1900s. I mean, they used them up to the 1950s. And so even maybe even later when they didn't want to drag um, air hoses and electrical cords, that some way, sometime they had electric drills. Those things were a bear. Um, and now they use pneumatic. Yeah, electric's not safe in the yeah. mines. <laughs> Not safe in there. The motors are so torquey that if the when the end of the bit, if it catches top or catches bottom or catches the divider or something, it'll wrap you right up and break your arms. Jesus. Like a coal drill, an air powered one will stall out mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. So this is a this is a jack light drill. This was uh this is my favorite weapon. Uh, when I was working at uh, one coal mine, we were running rock holes. I was running this guy. Um, this we drilled a, a rock pattern, a rock cut here. Um, a couple weeks ago we drilled it. But this is a pneumatic drill. It's basically a jackhammer with a, a piston on the bottom. So the leg on the back of the drill has a, you have a motorcycle throttle here. And as you increase the, the throttle on the back, there's the piston in here pushes the drill up. So it holds the drill. This drill weighs uh, about 120 pounds. So it, it holds the drill and pushes it in the hole as you drill it. You have your throttle for the hammer speed. Um, the other nice thing about this is that it would have a water line hooked up. So you have your pump down in the sump or in the ditch or something picking up water. Because rock dust is really bad for you. It's even worse than coal dust. So when you're drilling your rock, uh, the water actually comes in the drill. The, the, the uh, drill steel is hollow. So the water goes down through the center. The only downside is when it gets in there, it's got to come out somewhere, right? It's got to come straight out that hole again. And yeah. guess who's on the receiving end of the back side <laughs> of that hole? So you get pretty soaked running these things, but it's not too bad. It's not dusty. So we have the... I've seen um, some videos of people using this wearing like face shields and stuff oh, yeah. just for the spray back. Yeah, you could do that, but then it, you know the rock, the water that comes out is gray because it's got the dust mixed in with it. And your face shield after about 30 seconds, you can't see anything. Yeah. So you just take a bath when you're running it. That's all there is <laughs> to it. Now, how long would it take to do a hole with this? Three or four minutes. Compared to like 20 yeah. with the other? Yeah. Back in the old days, what they would have done, if, you know, pretend this is a drill bit. Oh, so we have a tamping stick in one of the holes. Because after you drill one hole, you put a, a tamping stick in it so that you can follow it. You know, you can eyeball so all the holes go the same direction. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a guide. A guide, exactly, yeah. yep. Um, but in the old days, if this was a bit, guys would, you know, you'd hold the bit and your buddy would be behind you with a sledgehammer and they'd hit it once. And then you'd turn it a quarter turn and then they'd hit it again. Then you'd turn it a quarter turn and they'd hit it again. And that's how they drove the number nine mine tour. That, really? that number nine tunnel was driven all by hand. Wow. By, uh, by hand jacking, yep. Huh. That's a... Uh labor intensive it is Jeez. yeah <laughs> now, how deep the holes go for blasting uh, six feet six, six feet. to eight feet but usually six feet in a rock yeah yep right. yeah so this rock cut you know you put you put a burn hole in the center it's called it's five holes and you'd load you'd load your first two holes and your second two holes the middle doesn't you don't put anything in it uh, and then your first timers and your second timers go in the center so that way when you fire this thing and then you have your outer holes and then your perimeter holes. So it, it fires the center and then these and then the outside ones so that the outside ones have somewhere to go. You know, it blows this whole center out first so all this rock can go somewhere before it blows outside or blows out into your cut. So do they blow like in sequence? Yeah, but it, rock timers go, they go really fast. So when you hit the button, it's all timed. It's all timed so that it goes, you know, it's like boom, it goes off really quick. Mm -hmm. Like coal powder goes off. You know, you can pretty much count the timers. It goes pretty slow. So I do remember this area. So you remember the escapeway? Yeah, I was up there once. Yeah. So that's all finished up now. So you have it all painted black, all the wood up there at the portal, so that you can't really see it. So you turn your light back off. It goes forever. <laughs> but, uh, it gives the illusion that it's a little farther than it actually is. It's about 45 feet out of the fan. But yeah, last time we were here was when we broke through. That was an mm -hmm. exciting day. Yeah. That was the culmination of a long week's worth of work. But um, uh, yeah, 
so it's all that's all driven, cleaned up, and ready to go. It's like our he mascot grew, that he, was here. He grew. He grew yeah. in size since last time. I thought he time. looked familiar. Yep. And he, he's, he's been rolling eat. around in the coal dust a little bit, so he's a little bit darker. Good eating, though. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's, uh... <laughs> what do we call him? Dunmore number... Dunmore number two. Dunmore two, yeah. that's it. Yep. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, this lump of coal came out when we fired for the escape way. It had one of the... It still has a drill hole through it. Oh, nice. That's kind of cool. So we saved that. I like the, the placard, it's kind of showing the, the progress. Yeah, and I saw a timeline. So this is, I know you explained it before, but just for people maybe seeing this for the first time, this escape shaft is functional if need be, right? Yeah, if somebody actually needed to get out there, you could. Yeah. Uh, if there was an emergency, if the place closed out of the portal, you know, you'd have to crawl out of the place. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, if, if somebody had to, if you had bad back or knees, you could put on a backboard, we'd slide you out. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's mainly for ventilation, so you have fresh air going through the mine. Uh, that also keeps the timber dry, which is nice. And uh, and also, if, if need be, you know, you can get out. It's it's a regulation. You have to have a second way out of every mine. And that was drilled and blasted primarily through a coal vein? Yeah, it's, that's all through the number two Dunmore vein. Yeah. So when guests do come here to tour this for themselves, is there going to be any charge for them? No, it's going to be free admission. Free admission for the mine tour. And, uh, we, we encourage donations, you know, we, we all volunteered on this project um, and for the most part the project was paid for through donations from local individuals and businesses. Um, so we wanted to, our, our way of giving back is letting people go through the place for free. So, um, but we do have the donation box out there and encourage anybody who enjoyed the tour or wants to donate to the group. We, we do have some uh, more ideas for the place, we want to put a little more effort into a couple more displays in here and continuation of some work outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, all, all donations are greatly appreciated and go, basically go right back into this project or others. And this was funded not by taxpayers, right? No, no, it was all, all donations from local individuals. Yeah, That's awesome. and, and some businesses, some, a couple coal companies actually sponsored the project too. I did read some nice. misconceptions like when the news stations were advertising about the opening coming. People were saying like, oh, it's our tax dollars paying for it. It's not true. Not one penny. Yeah. Nope, not one penny of tax dollars went into it. Now, how can people stay up to date on progress or maybe learn more about other mines in the area? You guys have a site? Yeah, sure. We'll be keeping up, um, you know, if we, well, I'm not saying if, but when, when we do a little more work in here, we'll keep it up on the on the Facebook page under, and on the website, undergroundminers.com. Okay. Um, yeah, should be, should be fun. And any estimates on when you're expecting phase two to start? This no. year, you think, or we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to enjoy. Must need a break. Yeah, we're going to enjoy giving tours for a little while. Okay. We actually just got a new, a new shop, next to the old one, a bigger one. So we're moving in to give us a little more capacity for restoring some equipment. Okay. A couple things we actually want to bring here. So, um, so we're going to we're going to concentrate on giving tours here and working on the new shop, get everything set up, restore some equipment. Behind the scenes work. Some behind the scenes work. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll be nice to actually, now we can, you know, enjoy the work we put into it mm -hmm. by letting the public come through and give our tours, so. I bet you're kind of pretty excited to see the the response from the public too. Because I know all, well, it, people have been coming for a while now wanting to get inside here. They have. And now they can, so it yep. should be exciting for all of you guys. Absolutely, we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow and Sunday, to see, and, and well, the, every weekend for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, uh, it's gonna be open every Saturday, 10 to five until November 4th, and then we'll close for the winter. And uh, we're looking forward to see what the outcome is. Yeah, we, we all have our guesses of how many people are going to go through, so we'll see what. See got a little that counter. Keep we track. do have we have we do have a person counter. Nice. I actually made a laser beam thing that goes across the portal that a co people counter that goes through. Okay. And then you pretty much divide it by two because people have to go back Cut out in again. and out. Yep. But we didn't have enough time to get that set up yet, so I just got a regular people clicker. Yeah. So one step at a time. If we don't if we don't make the number we want, we'll just <laughs> keep clicking. <laughs> So what you got to see in that early preview is what you guys will expect to see if you come here for yourself. Chris or one of the guys here at the Underground Miners will take you through, teach you about the tools, the equipment, the processes, and you'll be able to see the final result of all the work that was done in here. You guys seen a lot of the work in progress on my channel, on their channel, and on their Facebook page, but they are encouraging you to come out in person and to see it for yourself. They're open each and every weekend until November, and this is just phase one. Phase two, I'm really excited for because I do know partially what's in store for that so you guys are going to want to be make sure that you do stay tuned for updates and progress when that work does start but right now we're going to be waiting around because we're going to be having some guest speakers and some officials here they're going to do a grand reopening of the brooks mine here in scranton
You guys may remember too, from my last video, right where everyone's standing, there was a giant mound of material. Everything that they excavated out of the mine, they cleaned up really nice. And it's basically well manicured now. This is the car that was inside that they extracted out. That was brought in by the Moffat Coal Company. And you can really see how worn and weathered and decayed it is. And plans are still unknown for that, but I am glad it's still here for at least visual purposes. They do have a brand new sign here updated also has the visiting hours and some information regarding the mine but the way they landscaped it looks really great they got some narrow gauge rail some ballast steel beams and then we do have the loaded coal cars here with some additional spare track laying down here but they really cleaned up nice the second opening portal is over there with the fan and it's um, basically operational, up to code, ready to go for the public to enter inside. It just really is amazing how much they've accomplished and how far it's come in such relatively short amount of time. As you can see, there's a lot of people here. The buzz is in the air. We're waiting for some other people to arrive for their grand reopening, unveiling of the Brooks Mine here in Scranton. And although we got our early preview, thanks to Chris, we're gonna hear what everyone has to say regarding this monumental project because this is something that's been talked about for a long time. I personally never thought it would come to fruition, but I'm so thankful it has. But this is literally a shuttered, abandoned mine that's been closed for over multiple decades. And today and tomorrow and going forth, it's gonna be open once again to the public. In the Ark Park. It's a pleasure having you here. For those who don't know me, I'm Bob Gams. I'm chairman of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority that oversees Nayon Park in the city. But more importantly, I want to welcome to your park. Everyone here has a stake in this park. If you grew up in this area, your grandparents, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, aunts and uncles, I'm sure spent time in this park. It makes everyone a stakeholder. It might be a city park, it might be funded by the city, but we all own this park. And that's how every park should be. So, with that, welcome to your park. And thanks for coming out on such an important day in the Ark Park. We're gonna reinvent history here and, and bring it back to life by opening this model coal mine that's here. Our, our, we hear so much now that we have to think about our future, plan for the future, but we can't forget our past. This coal mine in, in 1902 was built to, to teach the children and the families of miners of just what their grandfathers, their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, went through on a daily basis. How they had to go to a coal mine and suffer just to make pennies to make that family survive. But it is part of our history. It might have scarred the land, it might have left some bad water and everything which we're dealing with now. But it's a part of our history that shaped this city, this county, the towns around us. I don't care if it's from Carbondale down to Wooksbury, coal played a important part of your life. It put food on everyone's tables, your, again, your, your ancestors, it helped feed them, helped their families grow. It brought immigrants from around the world here. The Welsh, the Irish, the German, the Italians, the Poles, all congregated here and ended up working in our minds to make this city grow and become the city that is the great city that it is right now. So with that said, again, 1902 this mine opened. It cost $1,800 to build this mine back then. I guess it was a large sum back then, but I mean, it'd be nice if that's what it costs now. Right? Uh, but we had a, a group of the underground miners approach us a little over a year ago. They came to one of our rec authority meetings and ran this idea by the board. And I had spoke to Chris a couple days before when he called me about it. And my answer was, let's do it. Let's go for it. Why not? You know, why not bring this back to life? And, these gentlemen, and, and I, too many that I can't remember all their names, but every week and since, and even weekdays, has spent hours up here. From the minute they opened this gate to go in there and see what it looked like, and for those who've been in there in the past, in the 60s and 70s, time stood still. When they opened that gate, it was the same thing that was in there then. I mean, they, they had to shore it up and do a lot of uh, construction work in there and everything, and they worked hard to do it to bring it to where it is today. Uh, they needed to put another exit in the mine so we could open it, and they did. 
They needed to retember the mine, and they did it. They laid a track down, and did a track, and these gentlemen did it on their time. There's no pay involved, and they're volunteers. And, and I can't be any prouder than call them my friends because you don't have friends like that too often that will give what they gave, their time, their effort, their sweat to help the city of Scranton, to help the Oak Park, and to help the citizens of the city. So with that said, I'm done talking. I'll talk to you all day about this park. My passion is Neog Park. Um, so again, welcome to your park, and thanks for coming out today. I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Welby. I'm sure everyone knows Mr. Welby. Thank you, Bob. We, uh, I think we all feel the same about, about Neog Park. It's, a, it's our own little central park. And, and, and we're so proud of, of this park and all that's been done, particularly in the last couple of years with the support of all the volunteers that we have in the park that have, have made it such a beautiful park. In just a few years, we'll, we'll have a, a pool again in the park. And, and, and I'd like to acknowledge our, our city council member here, Jerry Smurl, and Frank Waldenberg for our, our city clerk here, and, and, and also uh, our former state senator, uh, our, our friend, uh, and now with Congressman Cartwright, who hopefully will get to, to say a few words uh, with us in just a little bit. Brian Doughton from, from Mart Senator Martin Flynn's office. We have so many different people here with us today. Uh, and, and, and Dr. Sonia Lobo is here from our rec board, and, and, and Norma Jeffries is here from our board. And, uh, we'd just like to thank everybody who helped to make this happen, but particularly our volunteers. As Bob said, they did it on their own time. For the most part, they did it on their own dime. We did get a little bit of support from Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority, which we're so grateful for. And, and uh, we expect some more support from the city of Scranton, from the county, from the city, from the state, and, and from our federal people as well to, to help restore this and, and help restore this this car that's next to us here as, as well. Uh, the, the, the history of, of this coal mine, we're, we're going back to 1902, at that time, the population of the city of Scranton was 140,000 people. And, and, and Bob's right, this, the, the production of coal in this region, as well as the uh, production of, of, of steel and iron, uh, was uh, to a great deal responsible for the Industrial Revolution that occurred in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And, and this area is a great heritage, uh, and, and, and this is such an important part of our heritage, showing off what our parents, our grandparents, and great-grandparents did. I found out not too long ago uh, my dad, who died in 1969, uh, that, that I checked the 1940 census not too long ago, and I learned that in 1940, he, as, as 14 or 15 years old, was a, listed as a slate picker. His, his brother, Uncle Bud, uh, uh, was listed as a laborer in the mines. I did not know that. We have so many relatives of ours, so many friends and family members that, that worked in these mines. Some uh, uh, lived to tell about, some didn't. And, and, uh, the volunteers that we have working here are volunteering for us. The underground miners are made up of, of genuine underground miners. A lot of you work down in Schoolfield County in that neighborhood. We also have some volunteers that we just have a huge, massive interest in this. From bridge engineers to, to, to just about every walk of life. They're here uh, uh, volunteering every weekend and oftentimes at night. Uh, and, and, and we're ever so grateful. We're, we're, we're really excited that you're here for this. They're going to be open every Saturday going into the fall, late fall, and then they're going to reopen again in, in the spring of next year. And, and when they originally came to us, uh, they, they set up a plan where uh, we would be charging admission to help defray some of the costs that they have. And, and, and they came back to us and said, no, it's going to be free to the public. And, and hopefully we can get some grants for you to help help support that and, and, and help uh, uh, help to grow this area. Uh, Senator Blake, uh, and, and if you don't mind me calling you that, you'll always be Senator Blake to us, if, if, if uh, you could. And, and also I'd like to acknowledge somebody else here, Bob Savakinas. Bob Savakinas is an incredible historian who uh, has done uh, uh, videos on our heritage, and I served with Bob on the board of Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority. One of Bob's pet peeves uh, uh, was, we need to share our heritage. It's not just all about the trails, which we're all so proud of, the development of trails from Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority. Bob would remind us, we have to share our heritage as well. Bob did a documentary on Rocky Glen and the Agnes disaster, and perhaps he'll do one on, 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 on the mining heritage in this region. I'm sorry, Senator. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity to be here. Um, as your former senator and, and uh, now working for Congressman Cartwright, I'm here really to express the deepest gratitude to the underground miners for all their time, for all their effort, for all their sweat, 
to make this possible. I was in this mine as a child. My mom and dad took us to swim at the Nayak pool all the time, and my dad took me down here when I was probably, I don't know, five, six years old. So there's a, a, a linear connection for me to be here today. But I do, again, on behalf of the Congress, want, want to express thanks to the underground miners for all of their effort uh, to make this possible. It is a milestone uh, for the park and for the city, uh, and to repeat uh, Bob's remarks, just to keep in mind our, our heritage um, and all the ancestors who uh, were part of the building of, of the city of Scranton in northeastern Pennsylvania. I do have a citation here from the United States Congress to give to, to the underground, underground miners to thank them for their work. Thank you. And, and, and also, uh, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, our, our mayor, who would be here, uh, but she's hosting a national conference of mayors right now down at the Radisson. And also we have with us here, where is he, our state representative, Kyle Donahue. Uh, Kyle Donahue's here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support, uh, not just of this and everything in the park, but everything throughout our region. And you step outside your district, too, and helping the area, which is really appreciated. And also we have Addie Rocco here from Senator Brown's office. Addie is, there she is, right in the front there. Thank you for being here. Uh, I, 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 I got a little bit involved in working with Chris, Chris Murley here. Uh, I know his dad, I used to work with his dad in radio uh, several years ago, and, and also Dan Shirtliff. But uh, Chris, if you would uh, uh, talk about uh, your group and what drove you to to give up the madness that you're giving up all of your time and, 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 and what you are. Thank you for doing this. Chris Merlin. Thanks. Thanks. So this is amazing. We didn't expect this. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, this is not just for me. This is for the other 15 guys that worked on this with us every Saturday. They gave up their time and their families for letting them get away every Saturday. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So this idea came, you know, we've been monkeying around old coal mines, no secret, since 2002. And um, we started working in a couple tour mines around 2006, starting a Pioneer Tunnel down in um, Ashland. And Adam reminded me of this a little while ago and said, you know, we were driving home from that and said, we, we need our own tour mine someday. And that was probably 2007 or so, and now here we are. <laughs> but we were, there were four of us were sitting down in, um, tracks restaurant and I said you guys ever see the Brooks mine up at Nayok Park this was in January of 2022 and I said no no right, let's go check it out so we came up to Nayok Park here in winter there was snow on the ground we all came down to stand in front of it and the board was up and both of my grandparents lived in uh, the hill section in Scranton and I remember walking over here in, to the park in the 80s when I was little and going on the roller coaster and the little train ride and going to the pool and the highlight was always walking up to the mine and taking a look inside. Back then, it wasn't open, it closed in 75, and there was no boards on it, it was just a gate. And it, you know, as a kid, you walk up to the, the gates and you look inside and you see a black hole of little tracks going in and your imagine takes, you know, takes over and you know, these mines go all the way to Wilkesbury. So you go in there and you come out in Wilkesbury, you know, that's, that's what you hear. So I always think about that over and over and over again. And when we stood in front of the place and we kind of thought about it and said, well, you know, that wouldn't be too big of a deal to open that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wouldn't be too big of a deal. So um, we said, let's, let's see if we can do this. It, it needs to be open for the, for the city again. It'd be great to have four, four mine tours now. And something, people from the park could just walk right in and walk back out again. But we don't know how to do it. So let's just start talking to people and see what happens. So I, I got Bob's phone number, found out he was the one to talk to. So I called Bob and said, yeah, you got my go ahead. So the next thing we had to do was call the state mine inspectors. So we called them and told them our ideas. And they said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. You know, here's some guidelines that you guys got to do, which we met all the guidelines. And so we started working on the project in March of 2022. And here we are today. It, uh, there were some, some days that were pretty grueling. Driving that second hole outside was a lot of shoveling and low coal, which you guys will see. We'll tell you all about that inside in a little while. But. Um, yeah, we, we made it all happen, and I want to, you know, thanks to everybody to the park and everybody that helped out, and especially all, all the helpers. You know, it's not just it's not just me. You know, it, there was 15 other guys, like I said, besides me that worked on this project, and they deserve just as much credit for this as I do. So, thanks to the rest of the underground miners team for helping this project. <laughs> With that said, Bob. Tom. 
So I, I think we're we're good. We take questions here. We're just gonna go inside. And we'll so we do have one little ceremony. We have to have the ribbon cutting ceremony, but in anthracite we don't cut ribbons. We cut firing line. So, <laughs> so we're gonna shut this off and we're gonna cut our ribbon. Bob. Bob, we're good to go. Cutting this fire line, we uh, open this mine. had a little table set up over there I was curious as to what they had to offer so the first one is a little readout about the group themselves about their history how they got started so grab one of those to learn more about the underground miners but the thing that's really fascinating to me and something I've talked about before is Nag Park is a park but it's actually been a different type of park over the years there actually used to be a small kind of like amusement park here in the back area of the park over there, they used to have a roller coaster, a train ride, um, basically like a small amusement park. I remember coming here in the 80s when they were still operating and riding some of the rides. I had very vague memories, but there was an actual operating park here. But more importantly, where Interstate 81 is now, next to the train tunnels near the gorge area, there used to be another park that joined this one called Luna Park. It says it was on the eastern side of the park opened in 1906 and there's a disastrous fire in 1916 it's only open for 10 years and reportedly there's still ruins today on the other side of 81 of uh, some foundations and other things reportedly 81 is basically paved over most of it there's not really much left but there are still some ruins out there reportedly which maybe down the road in the future i will try to hunt those for myself but it does have a you know a, a printout here showing all the you know, what it used to look like in its heyday. It's just pretty fascinating. And they're offering this too for guests and the public. So hopefully it's still here when you guys come for yourselves, you can get it and see like they used to have like a lake area, grand staircases, the people in their fancy garments. So just shows how much history is here. Not only mining related, but just park related, amusement rides related. A lot of history here in Scranton, but specifically this footprint here, Nag Park and the former Luna Park, which were kind of sister parks at one time. And you come here, get these for yourself and read up and learn some history.
I have to say that was my first time ever seeing a ribbon cutting ceremony being done with detonation cable. That was a <laughs> rather unique and creative way to kick off the opening of the mine. Some of the members are out here doing interviews right now with media and other media and members are inside doing the tour. As you saw, we already got our early preview thanks to Chris. We got here early enough and were able to get inside before everything took place. But being that this was an invitation only event, there was a lot of people here, more than I was expecting. And there's also some curious onlookers here at the park because this isn't open to the public today. That happens tomorrow and they're anticipating a lot of people, but just for invitation only, there's a lot of people here. It's being documented by newspapers, television stations, radio. It's being covered on all aspects and of course YouTube as well here with my channel. So that leads me to my next thing is that I do want to thank all the underground miners for their graciousness and just allowing me to do what I've done over the past year of documenting the work that's being done, promoting their events, being able to donate, and basically just get the word out there and hype up the anticipation of what was leading to this coming weekend, that the end was in sight. What was originally just thoughts amongst themselves became to an actual solid plan. And here, August 2023, it's officially opening to the public after more than 40 years of being nearly in an abandoned mine. A mine that had no timbers, no lights, no ventilation, no escape shaft. I should say escape tunnel, shaft is vertical. I did learn that from those guys. Um, but it, right now it's up to code, it's safe, you know, it's basically the best it's ever been. And it's gonna be able to be used and shared and visited upon generations of generations of people because what this is offering now is more of a reason to come to Nag Park and to come to Scranton. You do have the Lackawanna coal mine over in Taylor, Scranton area, but that, you know, has been open for a long time. And that's a whole different experience. This is a completely free mine tour. Yeah, it's only open one or two days a weekend, but that is something that's being offered for free by the underground miners to have their time here to take you through, answer your questions, show you what the inside conditions are like, and to teach you about the equipment and methods of mining. Even though it's never commercially used, it is probably the closest thing you get to to being in an actual mine that's safe and that is free. So that's just amazing that they're able to offer that. And as we learned too, there is no tax dollars spent on this work. It was all by donations and grants. So it just shows what can be accomplished when the right people come together and they all have the same goal of bringing something back that's gonna be showed and shared and appreciated by thousands upon thousands of people, whether they're local or just visiting. I know this is gonna be something to be talked about for a while. Otherwise, if you wanna see the videos I mentioned of me coming here showing the work in progress, they will be linked down below as well as Underground Miners website and Facebook page because phase two is coming in the future. When that does happen, hopefully I will be here because from what I heard, it's gonna be pretty phenomenal what they have in store. No spoilers, no hints, no nothing, but I did hear what's planned. And if those plans come to fruition, just like this did, you guys are gonna be in for quite a treat. Otherwise, if you wanna see other mine tours I've done, such as Lansford, Pioneer, Lackawanna, check the playlist down below. But now we have four coal mine tours here in the Northeast Pennsylvania region, and this one being 100% free. So hopefully you can come here for yourself and check it out. If you can't, at least you get to see it through our videos. And I'm sure the dozens of other videos that'll be on YouTube once people do come here and view it for themselves. With that being said, thanks so much for coming out today and being a part of Media Day here at the grand reopening of the Brooks Mine in Scranton. Again, huge special thanks to the underground miners and everyone that's been a part of this coming to what it is today. I couldn't be happier to be a part of it. So take care everyone, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.